the President Sakai of this region. Thank you for joining us and congratulations on your award, Port Award. We were just chatting, but I think you have some similarity with Jinushi. What are the similarities? Well, um, yes, talking about a competitive strategy. Well, we go after niche markets. We try to differentiate ourselves and focus on niche markets. Um, so I think um, that uh, we do have something in common with Jinushi. But initially, um, everyone thinks what pe people think is niche because you focus on that and you expand the business in that so-called niche market, it turns out to be that it's no longer a niche market. I think that's your company. Well, um, well, a Professor Porter's um, strategy is positioning. So um, what you do and do not do within the industry, you have to make clear your position, your original position. This reach, I think, uh, is such a typical example. Well, um, you are um, trying to build a platform to match um, talent with the employers. So this is a general image that people hold. And um, looking at the labor market in Japan, um, yes, it is a growing market, but um, can you talk about things that you're not doing? I think that will make it clearer to us your positioning. So what have you opted out? Well, um, initially, when we started the business and now and things have changed, um, but um, originally, um, it, uh, we focused on uh, trying to get talent that can be um, start working immediately and the annual pay is very high. So um, this is something that differentiate us, differentiate us from the beginning. So the target is different, yes. You said 10 million yen. Sal annual salary and above. And um, this is a professional market where the, the talent um, can contribute to the business immediately. And as Professor Noma was saying, it's a platform. Well, yes, um, platform business, so you think of that it has high potential these days, but in reality, um, once it becomes um, digital, I think the entry point is very limited and it's not Difficult, it's difficult to differentiate and it doesn't make much profit. But you are growing your business, very profitable business. What's the difference? So um, you're targeted on this talent pool, which is very professional. Well, um, in doing the platform business, I think of that. Um, we, we think uh, that we need a platform because it's digital, but matching and ma do matching, but it's not always a good fit. So we have to um, listen to the companies and companies wanting to hire and also people seeking for a job. We have to listen to what they want. And so we insist on listening to the voices and um, based on this human value, we try to develop this platform. Well, this platform business, the category, um, it's a um, byproduct of digital age. You can use um, digital different technologies and have this platform. But in your company, I sure use digital technology, but uh, the order is you have to satisfy both the job seekers and the companies wanting to hire. And you need a lot of human resources and input. What do you do? Well, as you said, for example, companies, uh, they want to recruit uh, talent. You have to listen to uh, what kind of people they're wanting to hire. Uh, in our platform business, uh, we think about which search items um, are needed um, in order to identify their needs. Because the ultimate destination for our business is um, that, um, well, um, the businesses can do it from uh, on their own, ultimately, if they learn. Uh, but uh, we um, try to support them because they won't be able to do it from the very beginning. And ultimately, we want them to be able to do everything on their own. So um, you try to stand by uh, the company and misreach personnel 
is in charge of the company and talks with the company to try to identify how the company can hire, recruit the person they're looking for. But meanwhile, for the job seekers, uh, you have to do good matching and you have to support the job seekers too. What sort of support are you providing? Well, naturally, um, in technology as a step, um, you have to uh, think about how to approach your customer. So, uh, but uh, to begin with, in our strategy, uh, we uh, thought of direct recruiting. And um, so from the very beginning, we're searching for direct recruiting, but there's another element to our platform, another player, and that is um, the headhunter. And um, opening uh, the database to headhunters. And, and this, uh, thir there's this third party player, so an individual um, well, um, the headhunters um, really um, worked hard on this, and this led to our success at the platform. So we, it's thanks to the headhunters that have done their jobs that we are successful. Well, this region itself is a direct recruiting. So unlike the conventional method, you're not doing um, the staffing um, or introduction of jobs, but there were headhunters in the past, and for them, this reach value is what? Compared to the days when you, there was no biz reach. Of course, um, in doing staffing, um, we're functioning as a st staffing agent, and you have to gather people. And um, at each company, you try to um, try to gather, attract um, customers, not on an individual basis, uh, but you uh, use a database. And so you have a certain quantity and uh, people of certain quality. So if you go to that um, database, you can identify people that they're looking for. So headhunters can use this database. You provide, you open up this information to headhunters uh, because um, by having many people engage, the value of your platform will be enhanced. So that's the crux of your platform business. So did you decide to open the database to the headhunters from the very beginning? Well, um, yes, um, we did disclose our database to headhunters from the very beginning, but um, I think their priority went up uh, later because um, um, and we felt that the individual, individuals had difficulty doing everything on their own. And thinking about the customer service, uh, we wanted to rely on headhunters to assist us uh, where the individuals could not do everything on their own. Well, the platform business. So which, you have to think about which side you're going to focus on. In other words, are you going to stand by the job seekers or the recruiters, the companies wanting to recruit? In this case, um, this reach is on which side or neither side? Well, the study point uh, we um, uh, we targeted for the high uh, to be a high class um, recruitment site uh, with an um, annual income of ten million. So we focus on the individual searching for jobs, and you get them to pay from for the registration right from the very beginning, and so. There needs to be, you have to satisfy them. You have to find them a good job for them to be satisfied. So you appear to be on the side of the job seekers, but you're not an agent for the job seeker, right? Well, um, now, well, we are currently uh, flat. We are a platform. We're neither on um, the company side or the re job seeker side. Um, so um, I think you have to think about your priorities, uh, but I think it's not priority, but the order. What do you do first? Uh, because you do something first, you can do something next, and then after. I think um, this is um, what I think of a story of the strategy. And I think this is a crux. So you list up um, the things that you're doing, your positioning and trade-offs, and once you list them up, it does appear to be original, quite unique, and still, it doesn't tell you why your business is growing and prop being so profitable. So I think the order is quite interesting. Naturally, you use digital technology, but you use manpower to match both sides. The job seekers, 
they send, submit their resume, CV, and you give advice to them, right? And uh, there is the human input. Um, the job seekers can receive such uh, service from people, right? And that is part of our customer support. And in our case, um, we have the headhunters on our side. And um, so uh, we update the resume CV with their assistance. So that in itself holds value. So um, even if you're not thinking of changing jobs right now, you want to appreciate what your value is and how you're seen from the labor market. And these people pay money to be registered, right? Yes. And for both sides. Because you have this human input and using human resources, uh, that it makes your e job easier, being able to rely on digital. But what's often said about this industry is everything will be unneeded. AI, if you input something to AI, the AI will give you the answer. And costs will go down significantly. We hear such stories, but is it possible to do everything digitally? I think that'll be difficult. Well, um, down the road, um, there could be such a future awaiting us, uh, but I believe that that will be difficult in running my business. To give you an example, um, for example, companies wanting to recruit and um, trying to automate um, the recruitment process. We are working on that, uh, but uh, in order to automate, you have to have a clear idea of the requirements of the person you're looking for. Can you automate that? That's difficult. You have to have a dialogue, and you ex that you have that have to have that company explain to you. We are faced with such and such, so we need such and such people. So there are uh, things um, that um, can be done automatically by the digital, but there are things that that humans have to do. I think humans um, have value, and I really feel that. So um, in order to have good matching, you have to define clearly the conditions that need to be met. And um, it's, you're dealing with people, humans. It's not a machine. So it's not as if you have a checklist and you say, we need this, that, and that, right? No. Well, that's obvious, but um, I talked about the order being different, important. Is it digital or analog? Human? Well, it's not a choice that you make, but um, because people spend time and doing the groundwork, then after you can use digital and AI, it's not in choosing one or the other exactly. Platform. Well, um, there will be new entrants, and the technology is changing. So there will be a large number of new entrants. Uh, AI will come in, and BizReach, so, um, direct marketing platform might be disrupted. Well, some may say so, but to those people who say so, please counter-argue and say, it's not that easy. Well, it would be good if I could say that. <laughs> um, and so, um, um, well, this surprise uh, assumes um, that you focus on the process, which leads to success. Um, but um, we have to re-examine our comp competition strategy and uh, how we build our portfolio. Um, we have to think of that in our next phase of strategy building. Well, looking at the labor market in Japan, changing topics, I will reach 60 next year. From around that age, um, I think many people will start to look for new jobs. And the job, you, job seeker users at BizReach, do you see that age group increasing? Yes, naturally. Well, I don't know if it's at misreach or the market that we see more and more such people. But um, yes, um, I think, um, it, it, well, but it is true that the number is increasing. I don't know if I can say this up openly, but at misreach, 
Um, uh, the oldest person who found a job was 80. I was reading the newspaper, and those above 65 are still working in Japan. Well, Japan is overwhelmingly high against the other developed nations, and people are not reluctant to work. They enjoy working. Well, this does suggest that there is a potential, a promising future. Well, Bisreach uh, was doing a lot of commercials, and you were focusing on young people, uh, people who want to build their career, and uh, changing jobs to build their career. That was the image of the commercial. Uh, but in reality, um, there is promising um, a market for the older age group, trying to seek for job after retirement. Yes, we do see a potential there, but um, careers, well, we, um, the longevity is 100 years. Um, so, and we could, out of the 100 years, um, work until 80. So um, it's difficult to think of just one single career. And that's the reason why for the young people, we talk about building careers. And for the seniors, uh, we say that they still have a lot of potential to work. So we are handling humans, not machines. And um, you have to uh, really build up the know-how to spill out the needed conditions to be met. I think the older age group will, ha will be required to satisfy different conditions from younger people. Well, um, is it possible for the job seekers to register free of charge? Yes. And you, so you come to understand something, right? So once you register, um, the companies and headhunters, well, they send in their scout. And you recognize that you have such challenge, and then you're wanted by such and such companies, and people of the same age group as me, try and register. You'll see how the labor market sees you. With Professor Nomo, I'd like to <laughs> register and compete with her as to which of our, the two of us are, will be more popular. Thank you.